welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross, and today I'm going to continue my sort of segments looking back at codexes within 8th edition. Today I'm going to look at Chaos Demons. Uh, an interesting faction to say least when you look at their transition from 7th to 8th. Uh, in this I'm going to have a look at... I'm going to look at them within 7th to give a bit of context. I'm going to have a look at the rules, which are the universal rules for them, their stratagems, relics, etc, etc, etc. Then I'm going to have a look at the roster selection within the codex itself. Now to play Chaos Demons you obviously need a codex. Uh, you now need a copy probably of Engine War for some extra stuff. And if you're into Forge World, Forces of Chaos though, that one will be getting updated soon. But it gives you an idea that compared to some other factions, this is sort of like the minimum you're looking at. Because uh, some other factions do have a few more. So let's have a look at them within 7th edition. Chaos Demons are an interesting one to look back, uh, comparing from 7th to 8th. Much like Necrons, this, one, this was an edition where they excelled, and their transition to 8th edition, there seems to be a lot that was lost for them. The first I'll mention is summoning Demons' Malefic Psychic Powers. Essentially this was like the psychic powers uh, that everyone sort of had access to, and it had a lot of risks behind it, except for Demons, a lot of those risks were kind of mitigated. Uh, the table offered buffs, but more importantly, it allowed you to summon in extra units, mostly demons. Uh, used well, an army can grow in size at a good rate, and if your opponent doesn't you know, keep up with putting the demons down, it just results in your army slowly swarming your opponent if they can't you know, deal with them. Uh, it could also fail, due to poor dice rolls, and it could be quite costly, but generally if it does go well, then your opponent will be very much on the back foot. The other point is that 7th uh, relied less on unified forces than 8th seems to. Their difference in Chaos Demons, you know, sort of they worked together uh, as a unified force in a way in 7th, but now in 8th editions, demons really do struggle, especially with like their grey demons and heralds only buffing the demons around them uh, or the ones that they share a mark with. And stratagems in 8th, trying to give a fair representation for each demon means that, you know, most of the stratagems, etc. are limited to the marks rather than having a solid generic base. The average game rewards unity. Sure, we did have the Loyal 32 that was used for Imperials to get some really, really cheap uh, command points. That's not so easy for demons and mixing them in a detachment results in losing a whole bunch of abilities. So you really want to keep them in the same detachment at night and that means that a lot of the roster is kind of lost on you. Uh, the universe rules, Chaos Demons have a few here, and while they are good and many, they are focused on taking certain demons. While having various different abilities is usually not too bad, they are strict to the demons themselves. To an extent you don't really have legion rules to choose from, but a singular rule aimed at each, dog, uh, each god specifically. Uh, you know, you've got also when it comes to these is that, you know, you've got your rules of two universal ones. These are demons given a five up invul. This is standard to demons in general. Uh, it's even in the Chaos Spaceman Codex when they have a demon unit. Nice to have, especially, you know, with force of high AP. Uh, that's going to be useful, though if your opponent knows you're playing demons, they'll likely just switch out AP for volume of shots and that's going to hurt you. Uh, Demon summoning is the other one as well. Uh, I talked about this in Chaos Space Marines, but basically, you know, summoning used to be a little bit too good in 7th. It was maybe just a little bit overwhelming, but in 8th, it's almost not even a consideration. Uh, you know, and I just believe that that is a rule that needs to be looked up from the ground up. Similar to uh, Necron's reanimation protocol, it was too good in 7th, and in 8th, it wasn't so good. So they need to look at the weaknesses there and try and sort that out. As for each demon, uh, they get their individual rule, mostly working to their strengths. Corn adds a strength of attack and combat. I believe you have to charge. No, I think it's if it's first round, basically charge where charge or heroically intervened, I think. Siege gets five ability with plus one invul, which is good, but I kind of wish it was maybe something more magic oriented, psychic orientated. I think that would have been a, a little bit better. Nurgle has disgustingly resilient, again, you know, shared with their mortal counterparts. And it does help keep the resilience, and I feel that's good to be on the more resilient side, because that's kind of like a death guard thing. So the next fight first in combat, which again is taken sort of from the Emperor's Children, the Legion traits. All these feel like your Legion, Regiment, Clan, etc. traits, and overall fine in many regards. I like them, they do boost you know, your force quite well. 
The actual Legion rules or pure detachment ones are a little bit more difficult. Where in other codex, they'd give you, you know, if every model had detachments, you know, they'd give them all an extra rule. The four, you know, for Chaos Demons, it gives every character an extra rule that buffs the demons around them. I like the idea behind it, but you're going to reward demons for going a singular mark in a detachment, which massively restricts the unit selection you can actually take. Something not many other armies have to suffer, unless they've got small ro uh, rosters like uh, Harlequins or something. They already get a bit of a pull going on that one. This massively restricts you. It's something, you know, then, you know, what I'd say, you know, just give them an extra rule, is what I believe if you take a whole detachment of corn, give them just an extra rule and make the marks maybe, uh, the loci maybe an upgrade uh, for your characters, give them an extra aura ability, that'd be quite nice. I just think, you know, people can plan around with this well, but you don't want your bloodthirster hanging back with blood letters, you want it to be in the combat, you know, so it can get the real charges. And I think ultimately, you know, other armies when they get their detachment one, it benefits the whole army. This one, it benefits the character and those around them, but that really does restrict in quite a few ways. Summary on this is the mark rules found at the start of the codex are fine. Involve saves is fine, but if your points are just carving, they will be countered. Uh, demonic ritual needs to be worked from the ground up. And detachment rewards for choosing one god to devote to an attachment, I feel just needs to be a little bit more rewarding. Going to warlord traits, overall fine and well written. Again, there is focus on separate gods, but by offering six for each, this gives good representation and options, more than just about most other forces. However, as you typically will find that demon armies being represented by maybe one or two gods, because you take maybe two detachments, then you'll probably take one or two. A lot of these will go to the wayside for you specifically. You won't be able to use it because you maybe play Korn, you don't play Slaanesh, etc, etc. So it's good that they have an even representation there. This is where I find demons kind of strongest, offering the same amount of options that other forces have, but knowing that the, you know, the demons themselves, the god choices, are not going to be used by some players, it's going to be prefer preferred by the force. So recognizing that, in a lot of ways, Chaos Demons kind of like four forces, the way it's written uh, or gone by, is very hard to get a mixed demon force. Uh, stratagems, so, sorry I skipped there. Stratagems. On the inverse, inverse side of Warlord traits, stratagems work to the weakness of demons. There is 19 stratagems to choose from, 7 generic and 3 for each god. Then there's 4 extra for each god added in Psychic Awakening. And then a few extra, I think, for Exalted, uh, exalted Demons. When you compare it to Spaceman Codex, the Spaceman Codex has like 34 generic ones, and then their Legion specifics have, you know, a whole bunch of extra ones as well. Um, that's just, like, not totally ideal. You know, it's just when you have generic, that tends to be the biggest strength of it. You've got to have a good ground base of generic, and when you're first in 34 versus 7, uh, that's quite limited. What I'd say is, you know, that is a huge difference, and I'm going from, you know, one extreme to the other. And many other forces between these do have, you know, small amount of stratagems. I know Death Guard only has like 13 if you don't count Psychic Awakening. You know, stratagems do play a lot in the game. I've, I find having a base level useful stratagem and specialist ones to add to your force is the best way to go. Demon stratagems are useful as long as their situations occur, but I feel an overall, here, uh, an overall here should be at least 20 universal and maybe 4 for each god would be a good baseline. Uh, this brings them up quite, you know, quite well, I just feel that if you don't have generic bases of stratagems, then the force as a whole does suffer quite a lot. Uh, the good ones that I try and look at stratagems and stuff and try and go like what's good, what's bad, maybe why I'd switch out. The good ones, Denizens of the Warp, I like it. Some would argue demons should still be able to deep strike like they did in 7th and I, I could be wrong on that, maybe people don't want that. However, giving a full army deep strike and deadly in combat can be really, really dangerous. I do feel like the, this could have been, you know, I feel like it could be handled better. Now, maybe I'm wrong here. I missed a warlord trait or relic that does allow you to get like free deep strikes or free positioning. I think there probably is one or two. But what about a rule, you know, if it was like warlord trait or relic similar to the deceiver, where it can move itself in D3 uh, Necron infantry at the start of the game? However, on inverse side, and I think you have to be 12 inches away from your opponent, if, you know, for instance, you had like, oh, I don't know, 
let's go with you know bloodthirster with, along with you know blood letters and you get like three units and you move 90 blood letters with it just over 12 inches away from your opponent that's going to be scary now the deceiver means you can't charge the turn uh, the turn afterwards in the first turn so that would give blood letters thing to think, think about but you can move so you could essentially be really close to your opponent you'd be like i can't charge you but i'm gonna get you next turn so that one may be a little bit too good, but I just feel there needs to be some kind of warlord trait or relic that does reward a bit of deep strike and a bit of uh, positioning, which would be good for demons. The bad ones, uh, soul sacrifice, summoning does not work in this edition. It's, uh, if it becomes relevant, then sure, maybe not bad, but for now, bad. Uh, let's also include demon pack in that, so that's already two stratagems out of the seven generic ones that I've said are bad. Uh, the other one I would say is Warp Surge. This is a little bit too expensive and easily countered. Maybe make it a bit like Rotate Ion Shield where you get plus one info up to a maximum of four plus, I think it is. Maybe then Zinch Demons, you know, they lose out. Make it two command points, maybe for greater demons. Help, you know, go crazy and save four command points and it affects every unit in the detachment. That might be good, might be bad, I don't know. Uh, or I'd also add that if the invul save of a unit can't be improved, but they would also benefit from this, then they allow to reroll ones on invul saves. You know, just something like that. I just feel at the moment it's too easily countered. You do it at the start of your phase. You go, I'm going to give two command points and they're going to get plus one invul. And your opponent goes, cool, right, I'll just target another big unit or something. Sometimes you will force your opponent. They're like, you have to deal with that unit immediately. But I just feel when you look at compared to Rotate Ion Shields, which I know is only in the Shun phase, this one just seems a little bit off. Simply put, the generic demon ones are kind of overall bad. That's three of them I said were bad out of the seven, so four are good, and even then I wouldn't even consider some of them good. One of them is just like the relic one, I believe. So, you know, the specialist ones are left out because most of them are actually pretty good. I just feel that if you, to improve the demons greatly, one of the areas to look at would be stratagems and give them a lot more sort of generic ones. I don't. I really like the specific ones for the chaos demons. Uh, so yeah, the specific ones to their demons. But I do feel that the generic ones need to be improved to give them a good base level. Relics are not bad as stratagems. Uh, four for each god, and I think Nurgle gets three. I feel there should maybe be an up to five each. But I could be being picky there. Overall, not too bad. All things considered, on average, most forces only choose one or two relics, so it's nothing too bad here. Engine War does add uh, Exalted Demons, which gives uh, Exalted Demons access to extra items, which is good. I'm not sure how useful they are, you know, being behind the command point wall. They're saying that the Exalted Demons do get an extra rule on top of it, so being access to new relics and also to extra abilities for Exalted Greater Demons. Yeah, it's not bad. But in the Codex itself, 4 for each and 3 for Nurgle is okay. I think I was looking up Death Watch, and Death Watch only gets 6. So when you're looking at that and they're getting 4, 8, 12, 15, yeah, it's a lot more for them compared to some forces. And I think just that spread of, you know, uh, relics is quite good for them. Warlord, uh, sorry, uh, psychic abilities, yeah, psychic powers. Again, like Warlord traits, they know that each god is specific uh, buckhorn, you know, they don't obviously benefit from psychic phase. And they know that each god should really have a bit of representation. So instead of them maybe have gone out of dangerous, they could have gone 2 2 2. And then I'd be like, that's terrible. They have gone 6 6 6. And they understand that each one might be its own different force in a way. So it was really good that they gave that good representation. My only gripe is, of course, corn having nothing. Lore wise, makes sense. No one wants corn to have psychic abilities. Taking Dean Prince into battle exchanges psychic power for an extra attack. And it's simply not worth it. We once had the blood tie stuff for Corn Demon, and I believe Age Sigmar does use it. Ultimately, this should be Corn Demon's answer to psychic abilities, uh, and also World Eaters once they get a codex. If they get a codex, once they get a codex. Uh, I think personally, it should be no problem making them similar when the time comes. After all, Death Guard and Nurgle have psychic abilities. A bit different, but some of them a bit the same. Zinch Demon's Thousand Sons have separate, but their, some of the psychic abilities are shared. No, Thousand Sons have a lot more psychic abilities, but Zinch does have some that are similar to them. Corn in general should have blood tithes as a mechanic shared between demons and mortals dedicated to corn. I loved in Corn Demonkins and I'd love to see it come back. Corn Demonkins, for those who don't know, was a 7th edition codex that had like, 
your world eaters and your blood layers is basically all corn orientated codex. It's actually a lot of fun. Summary of this part, so to summarize here, demons work when they know that each is different but need fair representation. So uh, wall of traits, psychic abilities, even relics to a degree, are all balanced in another uh, codex and keep them even. Stratagem is probably the weakest point here, our focus needs to be on generic ones so that all the demons, you know, separate ones to the gods, all of them benefit. That would be really, really good. And then a few specialist ones which got at the moment add to the strength of the specific gods. Lastly, if you feel deem something needs to be addressed, you know, sure in previous codex it was a problem, it was too good, or at least different additions, but in this is almost not a consideration, and that just seems not good. When you've got a rule that people just go, oh, it just doesn't work, then you need to really reevaluate it the second time you get go round. Look at the roster, special characters, I really like the section for special characters for Chaos Demons. Each of the four gods are represented by a greater demon special character and then usually a herald of some type, but a few extras sometimes. Very few codexes can say that their legion or clans, etc. have this sort of representation, that each one is sort of covered, so really good for the special characters for Chaos Demons. HQ, another good section from Chaos Demons, the Greater Demons, which, uh, you know, 7th edition, 8th edition did an amazing job updating. I remember the old uh, Greater Demons, and they were tiny, they were old models, the new ones look fantastic and they've been getting updated through the times. So really overall that's very very good. And then you've got a variety of options depending on situations, you have heralds coming in, in different flavour or two, and may, then maybe a chariot mounted one I think also is included there once, maybe. And finally Dean Prince, which I wouldn't mind a bit more customization to it, you know I'd say that about a lot of characters because they're now making you know, in previous editions, customization of your characters, there was loads, there was a plethora. I remember, I think it was at, I want to say, Chaos Space Marines 3.5, there was like two pages of Chaos Space Marine upgrades. And if you spent too many points, your Chaos Lord turned into a demon or something. It was amazing. I just feel there's not enough upgrades anymore. It's like you get a few weapon choices and one relic, rather than some sort of really cool stuff you could do. I uh, don't know how unbalanced it would be, but... Uh, I just feel that there needs to be, a, I, just, I feel this for 8th edition in general, that there needs to be a little bit more customization to how you make your characters. Troop choice, although there's five choices, uh, which is better than most codexes for troops, there's only one for each god except Nurgle, which gets Nurglings. I wouldn't mind seeing this one expanded, maybe a new kit with two different options, uh, or, you know, dedicated to a single god, so, you know, I don't know, you had, you know, Zinj Flamers, which could be either psychic orientated and just generic ranged ones. Sinesh would be close combat and ranged. Nurgle would be probably ranged and close combat. And Korn, I feel, would just be two different types of combat. Don't know whether I want to give them a ranged one, maybe a pistol equivalent, I don't know. But it's when you dedicate yourself to a god in one detachment, you're getting one troop choice. Elite choices, again another weak point here, only one selection for each god, except for Zinch which gets two. And this section is, the model range is also really old here, in most cases I think the only one that isn't is like Blood Crushers, which are super cool models, I absolutely love Blood Crushers, uh, I would love to see, I'd love to use them, I'd love to see them like Chaos Space Marines if they could ride them, that'd be cool, uh, I don't think they should. But uh, I know in Age of Sigmar I think the mortals can ride them, don't quote me on that. By the way, Blood Crushers look cool, but overall again, limited section. Fast attack, again, one for each god, and then two for a certain one, this time being Slanesh. And an undivided in Furies. Again, seeing a pattern, if you want to mix demons, you have options, but dedicating to a single is more difficult. Uh, heavy support choice, not even a choice for Nurgle here, one for the rest, I believe. Uh, plenty of chariots and things to go round. Probably not the worst section for everyone, but Nurgle. You do have the Soul Grinder. The Soul Grinder has a good few problems. Dedicated Transport and Flyers. No choices here with Dedicated Transport. I'm kind of okay with that. Part of me feels that you should maybe stick the Helldrake in here. I just don't count as Chaos Teams. I get it's a, it's a, you know, a, a machine that's had a demon possessed inside it. I think everyone's feelings on demon engines is individual to the person, but you know a flyer would be good for chaos demons because sometimes they need to get across the board. Just having a flyer that can swoop in a lot quicker, maybe ranged, would be a fantastic call. Lord of War. I feel 
Chaos Demons are truly missing a step here. You know, Greater Demons, etc. HQ Choice, and they're great. But, like, a huge demon, Knight Equivalent, which I guess Bloodthirsters uh, Blood kind of are. Just like a Lord of War Choice would be really, really ha uh, helpful. Don't know what it'd be. I believe... No, I don't like speaking about Forge World in these uh, videos because I like to look at the Codex because that's more what people play to or when the people go to the shop. But I do believe in Forge World there is bigger ones and they are quite interesting. I think I remember the the corn one, which was a, a model my friend absolutely loved and it's, it's quite an old model. But, you know, the Chaos Demons, there's so much potential in Lord of War. So much potential. Uh, and it's just missed out. I suppose they focused on the, the greater demons to begin with and so if it came between a choice between the two, greater demons would be my call because the upgrade the upgrade models to them are fantastic. Fortifications, there's Nurgle Force thing and I know there's some average combinations but overall fairly met. I think it actually works better with Chaos Obliterators, I think it makes their cover save even better and stuff. I think they benefit from it more than Chaos Demons, but don't, uh, sorry, uh, Nurgle Demons, but don't quote me there. And then I think Korn has one as well, the Altar, and it's, just, it's not in the Codex, but I think it does have rules. And generally it's not great, it's not totally ideal. And that's kind of it for Chaos Demons. I'm going to summarise this. There is fundamental parts of the rules that don't work and I think a lot of people can agree on. Demon summoning, which was a huge part of demons, is just not a consideration and it's a hard thing to balance between. It's like Necrons bringing units back. Bring units in for free can outbalance the game. It can make it really, really difficult and really, really difficult for your opponent. So it's trying to find a balance between the two there versus where it is now. It just doesn't work. Uh, stratagems, I think they just need to boost the generic as shame and psychic awakening that they then went down the route of again dedicating to each of the gods. Which I suppose if you just choose one god, you go with that, fair enough. Uh, but I feel it's just some generic ones would be really ideal. Uh, and then lastly, the ro roster. Though there's a lot of choices here, and many of the models are actually quite old, a lot of people like to play to a specific, you know, uh, demon. Uh, god in itself and I just feel that's where the range is lacking. Hopefully uh, maybe this will be addressed, maybe they'll bring out a new sort of kit for some of them and that way you can make multiple units from the kit but the danger always when these multi-purpose kits come out where you build a unit but half the stuff is left at the wayside, it's in your bits box, is that the price does jump up because reasons, I won't go into that one specifically. So thanks again for watching, please comment, share, like and subscribe. What did you think of Chaos Demons in 8th edition? I have got a feeling it's going to be largely negative, but that's why I do these, sort of give my views, it's not a tactical talk, it just gives my view on stuff and what works, what doesn't, is there things that I missed that needs to be addressed by Games Workshop, is there stuff you'd love to see, have you got ideas for demons, oh my goodness, give me ideas for demons, that would be awesome, uh, that would really really work for it. That would be really, really cool. Just to have an idea. I love to imagine these things, see what they do. Obviously, I have no impact on really what happens uh, in the background when it comes to developing these things. But there's some potential for some really cool demons, and I'd really like to hear about them. So thanks again. Check us out on social media. We can see our upcoming projects. And check us out on Patreon to help support the channel, bring you more content, because we absolutely love doing so. So thanks again. We'll see you on our Tabletop Salt Battle Reports.